Hey beautiful friends. It is Sunday, June 7th, and we are going to do our first weekly garden tour. I'm going to share you updates, what's going on in the garden, how things are growing, and give you a peek because a lot has changed really since the last tour. We've been dealing with a lot of slug problems. Join me on a tour of our permaculture garden. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know Let's start with this bed Right behind me are Fava beans and onion and brassica and garlic bed. So let me just show you what we have going on in here. And they are starting to blossom quite a bit. I planted some last year and they did not do well and they didn't blossom well and the beans all had some weird fungal issue. So I decided to try them again in a different spot and see how they do this year. So I'm gonna show you guys how they look and they're looking really good. Hey Bean. You're not the same kind of bean, you're a different kind of bean. <laughs> and then you can see in here, I have some onions that I planted. They go all around bordering the beans. I'm gonna show you guys the brassicas, which is a perfect opportunity for me to really give you a sense of our slug issue this year. You're just going to see really, really holy leaves and not the good kind of holy. Um, and a lot of damage, but things are still growing. Things seem to be surviving and bouncing back. I'm not too worried about it. And honestly, I'm just going with the flow of this year and appreciating what's going well and not worrying too much about what's not. It's all a learning experience when you're a gardener. As you can see, the new growth is looking really nice, but if we go back to the older growth, you can see the damage. And that guy over there is not not gonna pull through more than likely. Lots of damaged leaves, but they're doing okay. And that's actually um, a remnant of a beer trap that we set for the slugs to try to decrease our problem. If you come over here, you can see how much damage they've done to my first ever kohlrabi. There's just like no leaves there, nothing, but they're producing some kind of root, so we'll see what happens with those guys. Every year when I get ready to garden, I seem to think, okay, I'm gonna plant all these seeds and I'm gonna get to enjoy all this, this fruit and all these vegetables and all these different varieties. And then every year I realize, maybe I get to enjoy about 60 to 70% of it and the other 30% will often be a total flop. And that's just how it goes because every year is different. Every climate is going to throw you curveballs. Pest issues come out of nowhere overnight and you just have to adjust your perspective and appreciate the wins and learn from the losses. So let's take a look at the garlic because that is a huge win this year. And we planted 400 cloves of garlic, a bunch of different varieties. So let's celebrate that and let me show you how they're doing. So this is our soft neck garlic. It is doing really well now that the temperatures have warmed up. It's growing quite large, larger than it was when we harvested it last year. And everything's really healthy. You can see these tips are nice and green. There's no yellowing in the tips, which means the plants are happy and they have plenty of nutrients. When you start to see yellowing tips, I mean like this one is kind of yellowing right here but not significantly. You'll see some really yellowing garlic sometimes, and that often means that it's, it's lacking in nutrients. This stuff is looking really, really great. And I actually just found a pretty cool surprise while I'm out here showing you guys. The first start of one of my favorite parts of garlic. So let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. Do you see this right here? This is going to be delicious. Here's an even better example. Do you see this? 
If you've always purchased garlic from the store and you've never grown it yourself, specifically you've never grown the hardneck variety, you might not know, but there's another part of garlic that grows before you harvest the bulb that is so delicious, has so much flavor. You can make pesto and I don't know, I make lots of pesto and I just cut it up and chop it up and saute it in with everything. So easy to use and it's called garlic scapes. The garlic scape is what will eventually, what would eventually produce the garlic seed. And what can happen is if you allow it to stay on the plant forever, the energy will go to the seed and to the flower of the garlic instead of going to the root. So about a month before you harvest your garlic, we harvest garlic in mid-July, about a month before. Oh, there's actually some that are almost ready to harvest. Let me show you guys, it's pretty, pretty exciting because they always pop out of nowhere. I want to snap one off, but they're not quite ready yet. They need like another, another couple of days. So this is a good example of one right here. Once they go into like a loop, like one loop, I snap them off at the base. Garlic scapes have a super delicious flavor. They're easier to work with than garlic because you don't have to peel them at all. They last for a really long time in the fridge. You can make like pickled garlic scapes. They're so fun and they're one of those first things that you get a harvest of in the spring because everything else is just still growing. So I'm excited that I got to show you the garlic scapes. And if you haven't had them before, be on the lookout about a month before the farmers harvest garlic in your area. Could be in June, could be in May, maybe it was a month ago, or could be a little bit later in June. And head over to your farmer's market and you might be able to find some garlic scapes. I have more brassicas over here in this bed that I want to show you guys. And I have another sad indication of the slug Mageddon. These brassicas are actually looking really well. The slugs did not affect them nearly as bad. We planted them a little bit later and I just don't think they found them. This one's even producing a small little head already. A little baby cauliflower head in there. We got a really late start on planting our brassicas this year and then it got really hot and I just don't think we're going to have a really good brassica crop in the spring. I have really struggled with planting brassicas in the spring. I'm going to keep trying. I'm not going to give up, but I have not figured out a system yet. Next year, I'm going to be trying no dig. I'm hoping to see that that will allow us to get things planted a lot sooner in the spring make some low tunnels in there and see if we can get some um, some broccoli and cauliflower to to eat fresh and to freeze and store this area right behind me this whole area i planted summer squash varieties so i planted different kinds of zucchini and i planted yeah mostly different kinds of zucchini and you don't see anything there right now and that is because the most frustrating thing of the year so far Everything I'm sowing in the ground, with a few exceptions, the slugs are eating the second it pops out of the ground. The second the seed sprouts, they just eat it right off. And so nothing is growing. Now I have come up with hopefully a solution to that problem. In addition to tackling the slug issue with a variety of methods that we're trying, I have decided to start all of my squash and some beans indoors in grow bags that I can just plant directly in the ground and hoping I'm hoping that because they'll be in grow bags and I won't actually be removing them from any pots they'll be okay with moving from inside to outside normally transplanting squash or beans is like a big uh, can be a big challenge and it, it can actually cause more more problems and they don't do well quick update on what's right here we have tomatillos right there they're flowering, but not putting off any fruit quite yet. And then just a few straggler tomatoes. And then we have this second bed, which I will take you down right now. The first half are all potatoes. So these are all potatoes coming up in here. And they're actually coming up really nicely right now. I think they were barely coming up last time I showed you guys. And then in here we have our last section of brassicas. Again, these guys have had a lot of damage, as you can tell. I mean, just a lot, but they are 
making a comeback. That was my most damaged one and it's still, it's still doing well. These are all Brussels sprouts. So they have quite a long growing season compared to other brassicas in my, in my experience. So I think they'll have enough time to produce new leaves and, and grow big enough to produce Brussels sprouts. But we'll see, we'll see. My corn section. And here we have my blocks of corn and they're all sprouting. I had a number of people comment on the last video about whether or not I was concerned that I planted multiple varieties of corn all next to each other and how that would affect the flavor. And I'm not too concerned. I know that they will cross pollinate, but they are in blocks and discrete blocks. I didn't mix them together in terms of the actual rows that they're in. So we should get some decent pollination on them, but we'll just see how it goes. I might have made a mistake and maybe I'll learn from it and do something different next year. Most of the corn that I planted is like an ornamental glass gem that you can use for, for eating and popping and making um, corn flour. Then I planted Italy Hill popcorn, so popping corn. And so I'm not as concerned about flavor, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. I, I'll let you guys know if it was a mistake or not. And then in this section, we've got some more, more potatoes, a few determinate tomatoes, ground cherries, and my favorite plant in the entire garden, our artichoke that survived the winter. And I actually could probably fill in this space a little bit. Um, I'm not sure with what at the moment. But yeah, you got your tomatoes and potatoes and some ground cherries and this beaut, this beauty. Hey, what are you guys doing? Okay, let's check out the third bed, the one that we call Nightshade Alley. Okay, so Nightshade Alley is actually doing really well. That's been super important to me because this is kind of the heart and soul of my, of my gardening efforts this year is my peppers and my tomatoes. And I'm just, I'm really happy and trying to celebrate this bed and not, not you know, mourn the losses of the slugs, the slug damage. We have okra that is coming in here. I have not thinned it because it does have quite a bit of slug damage. So I'm just waiting to see which ones survive and then I'll thin them out as they grow a little bit bigger. This section looks super silly. What they are are little pots with the bottoms cut off, filled with soil, and then I planted cucumbers in them because the slugs were eating all the cucumbers that I planted in the ground. So I'm hoping that just having them in a container off the ground will keep the slugs uh, away from them. And this will be my cucumber trellis, my eggplant in here, they're doing great. See all those pretty guys. As soon as they start to flower, I will take off, take off the row cover. Got some potatoes growing in here. A single squash plant that I am protecting from slugs. <laughs> I cut the bottom off this little container and put it around there and it actually seems to have been effective. So maybe a strategy for next year. But none of my other seedlings have survived. Not a single one of any of the trellises have survived the slugs, except for that one. Okay, let's keep going and let me show you guys the peppers. We have tons of baby peppers growing on these plants already, which is just kind of shocking because I've never had peppers growing this early. Oh, and it also looks like I missed out on pruning and my tomatoes are growing way too fast. Holy moly. I just can't, the tomatoes, they're just growing so fast. Let me show you guys. Look at them. And these are my little peppers. They've got some slug, they've got some minor slug damage, but they're producing already. They're flowering. They're, they're branching out nicely. And then, I mean, look at all these peppers. It's like baby peppers all over the place. As you can see, these guys need to be pruned badly. I am going to have to come in here tomorrow and start working on that. 
The peppers are doing really well. I was worried about them and the slugs, but they're, they're doing okay. Same deal on this side. Happy peppers with some baby fruit. More baby fruit down there. And happy, happy, happy tomatoes. Okay, so I wanna show you guys how the herb garden is doing. This garden right here is not very exciting. A couple of cabbages that are sad from slugs, some onions that are doing fine, and some beets which are growing very slowly. Which is not a surprise to me in the back to Eden method, which I'm nixing if you didn't watch my last video. So let's go over to the perennial herb garden because it just looks so lovely. And I have some foxglove blooming. We'll go over to the berms and the swales. I wanna tell you about what I have going on in the containers, like this guy right here. And finally, I'll finish off over in the hookah culture in the raised beds. This bed right now is so pretty. Let me show you guys. I love perennials so much because they just come back year after year, bigger, healthier, happier. And these flowers are so pretty, these little foxgloves. I planted them last year and they're flowering this year and I'm definitely gonna have to, to start some more next year for the following year. They're really beautiful. got lots of strawberries in this bed in this um like back to Eden style bed and should have tons of strawberries and not too long although they're super super little they're itty bitty so um I want to eventually have like a no dig bed with strawberries and just allow them to get big and luscious and fill out trying a couple different ways of growing them but that's not something we did this year. I have these three beds. This one has organic soybean, which I inoculated. This one has a couple different varieties of dry bush beans, which I also inoculated. And this one has also a couple different varieties of bush beans, but more green bean varieties and also inoculated. They're all just starting to come up. So you can see just the little green sprouts that are coming up. And these two beds, we have sweet potatoes, which look really rough right now because they were shipped to us as slips, but they're just starting to put off new little leaves, like that little guy there, and they'll all do that. They'll all put off new leaves and they'll eventually be beautiful and lush. So we have two beds of sweet potatoes. I just weeded in here, so you'll see like kind of the remnants of a lot of weeds. But in here we have our cantaloupe, and they're all sprouting, and the slugs are not getting any of these guys. <coughs> these are my red onions. They're looking awesome. A couple flowers. And then I have watermelon in here. There's a little baby watermelon. Another little baby watermelon. Some more little baby watermelons. More and more. I've got my containers. I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven grow bags over here, a couple pots. And then I have four grow bags over in the raised beds. And they have all different kinds of things in them. Mostly flowers, celery, and ginger. So in this one we have some marigolds, zinnias, a cosmo, and a ginger rhizome. It's kind of the same thing in all of them, really. <laughs> ginger, cosmo, marigold. This one just has different flowers. Ginger, flowers, and a little baby rosemary in there. More ginger, more flowers. This one just has a lot of flowers in it. This little guy has a nasturtium, some flowers, and a little baby kale, a little dwarf kale plant. 
And then we have my hugoculture bed. I pruned back a lot of the kale that was flowering to make room for some other things. But nothing really exciting here. This has been the bulk of the slug damage. As you can probably tell, the slugs love the hay. So the hay attracts them, gives them a nice home. And then that's why we have such an issue with the slugs this year. The combination of moisture and us providing a really perfect home has led to the slug issues. So we are reevaluating our entire gardening approach when it comes to crops that are vulnerable to slugs. It is kind of depressing because I love our rotted hay. It comes right from the goat pen. It's full of fertilizer from the goats. It works amazingly. It does get weeds, but it's just, it's so nice. Cause we honestly just grab it from the goat pen and put it, put it straight on things. And it, it's been so great for our soil, but we can't keep having these slug issues guys. And right now ducks is just not something that we have time for and have space for. So, next year we're going to hopefully maybe try to get some ducks rescue some ducks and build them a build them a nice little house but um we'll also have a like a six month a five or six month old baby so realistically it's just hard to plan life right now but what we will be doing is switching our method working on hot composting and hot composting down the hay and the goat um, from the goat pen as well as all of our other manure like our horse manure our, our chicken manure our rabbit manure our uh yeah lots of manure and we'll be moving to a no dig method because i have just seen such amazing results also you can plant in it sooner because it doesn't get so wet and it dries out a little faster in the spring. So I'm really looking forward to trying that. I'm, I'm actually really excited about it, but I am I'm bummed and it's been an adjustment mentally to cope with just the drastic hit we took this year. But yeah, here's the hygge culture. You can see some slug, slug traps, some flowers, some very damaged kale volunteer lettuces and lots of flowers. Honestly, I just filled this bed with flowers. A couple small tomatoes that are really happy. I just let these ones go completely wild, no pruning there. And I did plant some little bush beans as well. Here's another little container. Let's take a look at this wacky, wacky guy right here. <laughs> Egyptian walking onions are so funny. They're so funny. Let me show you guys what they do. So I mentioned in the last video that they will send off these seed shoots and they're doing that right now. And these seed shoots will weigh them down and they'll keep sending off more seed shoots and they'll bend over just like this has and they will start to walk essentially and drop their seeds and drop their little babies and produce more little babies like they did right there. They're so dang cool. I had no idea what Egyptian walking onions were last year and a follower and friend from social media messaged me and was like, I have some, do you want some? So she came and dropped them off and I love them. I think they're so fun and they're so cool and I, I just love having them. A couple things in here and I actually wanna point something out to you. That's really interesting. So take a look at this garlic in here. It's big, it's mostly pretty happy, but look at these tips. They're much yellower. And you know what's interesting about that, that is this bed is compost, but it did not have as much of the hay down. And the hay was filled with goat manure. So in the other bed, we have a lot of the hay and the goat manure down, and so we haven't, we haven't fertilized at all. And I think that's why these guys are just a little bit hungrier as exhibited by their light, light yellow tips. So I will have to do a comparison for you guys when I do harvest them to see if in fact they are smaller bulbs because maybe they didn't get enough nutrients. And one thing I wanna point out is the garlic loves the root stout method. The tomatoes love the root stout method. The onions seem to love it as well. And none of those things struggle with slugs like brassicas or even peppers. So I think 
we're gonna use the roost out method for those things, but we might have to pick a different area to use a roost out method because I don't want it too close to the other beds because I don't wanna encourage slugs to make a home. And we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll come up with some, some fun way of still using the method for the things that it works with and using different methods for other things. Yeah, so I've got um, shallots and garlic in here. I planted some um, like lone bush beans in this bed. So you can see like this one coming up right now. Raspberry bed has gone wild. It is full of fruit. So all of these flowers will be raspberries. And it's just putting off a lot of little flowers on the end of all the branches. Finally, we have a bed of peppers behind some of these peppers. Um, I have like 20 sweet potato plants and everything's doing well. The peppers I started from seed are much happier, much healthier than the ones I bought, which is no surprise. Honestly, when you start things yourself and you start them well, I find it makes such a big difference. I've never had the same kind of success buying starts elsewhere as I have with my own healthy starts. And finally, I wanna share with you guys a, a creative solution to a slug problem. So we have this trellis here that we put up for our hardy kiwi plants that we have here. And then one right there that's kind of sad looking. And then one at the end. So we have our three hardy kiwi plants and we needed a trellis for them. And I was thinking, well, how can we grow something on this trellis despite not wanting to use back to Eden and not wanting to dig up the soil. So I decided let's put some grow bags over there and we can grow cucumbers on the trellis because as I showed you, all of the slugs ate my cucumbers. And so over here, we're growing different varieties of pickling cucumbers. Over there, we're growing slicing cucumbers. So this should fill out with cucumbers as I train them to the trellis. And I thought that was just like a really creative solution to a problem. This will fill out and be beautiful. I love this. I love this spot right here, like the barn in the background and the garden. So I'm actually really looking forward to it. And I think at the end of the summer, we'll look back on this and, and be grateful for the slugs because they helped us be more creative and come up with some more solutions. So yeah, so we have this trellis. I've got my little herb box back there. And in all of these bags, I have a couple flowers on this side and there are cucumbers planted on the opposite side. So these are five gallon bags and I believe that's an eight gallon. So we've got eight gallon, five gallon, five gallon, eight gallon. And each one has about three seeds, but I'll let two plants grow. So it'll be two, four, six, eight cucumbers um, filling out this trellis. Well friends, thank you for being here. Thank you for joining me for my first weekly garden tour shoot down shoot your questions down in the comments below and i'll answer questions in the comments but i'll also answer them in our in our next weekly garden tour we'll see how things are doing and how the slug problem has uh to continues to go so bye beautiful friends